This architectural design pattern is used in pretty much any asynchronous system. And you as a developer gonna come across this one a lot. Doesn't matter if you're working on e-commerce systems or banking systems, this is really baked in, in a lot of places. And that's why it's so important to understand because transactional outbox and inbox pattern is eventually gonna lead to a more consistency and a robust asynchronous system when we develop it. So in this video, we're gonna try to understand the theory behind it. As always, take a look at the code to see it in practice. And with that said, let's get started. So imagine we are an e-commerce platform and we have an order service that takes a final order after the customer clicks on the purchase button. And we have a post-processing service. So after the service order is made, we are committing it to our own database to just save the records that, hey, there has been an order. Doesn't matter if it's a transaction or maybe you just insert it in one of the tables. But this post-processing service is responsible for, for example, sending out emails to the customer and informing the supplier because supplier is the one who's gonna be doing the shipping to the customer. Now, the order of these processes would look like this. As I said, first of all, save, save it in our own database. Let's say it's a relational database. Then we're gonna make a synchronous post request to a post-processing service. This one is either going to select the data that we just inserted from our own database, or you can also put, the, put all the details into the payload of the post request like this. And finally, after the post-processing is done, we can give the answer to the order service as an acknowledgement and say that post-processing has been accomplished. Now, what's the problem with this pattern or with, with this architecture? The thing is, it's very synchronous and there's a thing called temporal coupling, meaning if one of the services goes down, let's say the post-processing service has gone down while processing the request, then the order service is never gonna get an acknowledgement and we'll never know whether the request has been finally finished. Also, this can lead to inconsistencies because we already did a commit and the record is in the database. So in a way, the order is finished, but all the post-processing has not been done because this part never happened and we weren't able to fetch this data and actually post-process it. Now, what can we do to alleviate that? We can try to add a message broker to make it a little bit asynchronous. So this time we're still committing all the data to the database. And as a next step, we're gonna send an asynchronous message to a message broker. Notice in this time, in this case, we're no longer sending the post request to the post processing service directly, but we're utilizing a RabbitMQ message broker. And then as you can see, we are at the same time subscribing to this queue. As you can see, it also has number one, meaning it's happening asynchronously at the same time. So we're gonna get this event that, hey, an order has happened. Then the post-processing service knows that, well, now I can actually go and select the data from the, our database and then do the post-processing. And of course, then send an acknowledgement through the message broker back to the order service. Now, we also have to do a, something called DDAP or better called deduplication. Why? Well, here's the thing. If the order service sends a message to the message broker, but the post-processing service is down, as we also described in the example above, the message broker is not gonna send an acknowledgement to the order service and the order service thinks that, okay, I tried to tell the post-processing service that they need to do something, some post-processing, but I never got an acknowledgement. So maybe I can send the same message one more time to the message broker so that post-processing, maybe if, if it's revived, it can still pick it up. And now we're gonna get the same message two times, which means the post-processing service has to do the deduplication in this case. But this is not the main issue here. The main issue is actually still lying in this request because this exact request that's going from the order service to the message broker is still synchronous in a way. What happens if the message broker goes down? 
Now you can of course say what happens if the database goes down. Now this will be basically a failure of the whole system. But now let's be more realistic and say that the message broker just had an hiccup or an unhandled error and actually wasn't able to even accept the message. Now we're still ending up with some inconsistency because our database has this record of the order again, but neither the message broker nor the post processing service were actually able to take this message from the order service. What can we do? Well, we can use a thing called transactional outbox pattern. What is it? In a nutshell, we're basically adding a new table into our database. I'm going to tell you later why exactly we're adding it to our database, why not somewhere else. But let's first take a look at the diagram. So when we make a commit to the database, and as I said, it can either be one other table at the same time, usually it is. At the same time, we're going to expand our transaction and make another call to the outbox table. So this is some other tables that your business needs. But this outbox table is basically going to be a post box, let's say, where you save all the transactions that can be picked up. Now notice it has an ID column, pretty usual topic column, for example, what the order was about, the payload, like the quantity, and sent. What is sent? This is the most interest, interesting one. Well, let's take a look at the second element. We also have a relay service, or let's say call it a worker service. Can You can call it both ways. The relay service is going to pull this database every one second or every 500 milliseconds. It can usually be as fast as possible or rather should be as fast as possible. Now, the relay service is always going to have the latest data. Notice we're no longer making a post request. We're simply committing it to the database and then the job of the order service is finished. The order service can now basically be happy and go on with its life knowing that, you know, I did my job, saved it, everything into the database and now the post processing service or whatever it's called there can do its job. My part is done. And it is actually like this because now it's relay service to Pick, pick up the right database, uh, the right data from the outbox ta table. Now sent is either going to be zero or one. One meaning the relay service already handled this data. Uh, sent zero means it hasn't handled this data yet. So relay service is going to filter for the records that have zero. It's going to pick it up very quickly and send it to the message broker. Now the message broker is going to contain th one of these messages. And at the same time, obviously, we're subscribing to it, as you saw in the example before. And again, post processing now can do all, everything that it needed and then send an acknowledgement back to the relay service saying that, hey, I'm finished. And finally, after this is all done, the relay service can go to the outbox table and update the value of the processed entry to one. Now you can say this following question that I already mentioned. Why are we adding this outbox service to the database? Why aren't we using a different topic of in the message broker? Why aren't we using anything else? Well, if we put the outbox table into our database, we are more resilient. We're sure that we have at least one point of, not one point for failure, but one very resilient place where our data is eventually going to live. And this is always our database. You can of course make sure or have to make sure that this database is as secure as possible when it comes to data loss and replication and so on. This is good. And now if our message broker goes down, we're still having the data in our outbox table. If the relay service goes down, we still have it here. If the post processing service goes down, we still again have everything in our outbox table. Anytime the relay service message broker can start up and pick out, pick up the, um, the records that have not been sent yet from the outbox table. How cool is that? Now, let's talk about some optimizations because this is definitely going to put some stress on the database because the relay service, as I said, is going to do polling every second. And if you're Amazon, if you're a major 
e-commerce websites that has billions of items and millions of users, obviously pulling your outbox table is gonna put a lot of stress. So make sure you maybe increase the timeout. Let's say don't pull every second, but pull every five seconds. But then you also need to take into account that the transaction or post-processing is also gonna happen at a later point of time. And the next point is you can also optimize it by adding some parallelism. So the relay service can have multiple agents or workers, let's call it, and they can pull the Outbox database at the same time. Let's say two times, two different workers at the same time. And in this case, you can even increase the batch size. Let's say one worker is gonna look at the latest five records, not only one, to process it, to process them all in one batch. And in this case, if you're having multiple workers doing this, obviously you need to be able to lock some rows that are currently being processed by one of the workers so that they don't conflict and accidentally pick up the same rows. You get the idea. Now, why are we calling this video that you're watching now an inbox pattern as well? <laughs> because there's another pattern called an inbox pattern. And what is it? Well, it's literally the inverse of the outbox pattern. Now imagine we're throwing away the first part. We are only dealing the post-processing service. So the receiver's part, the consumer's part. In this case, we can actually run into the same problem. What if the post-processing service later contacts the emailing service and the emailing service can go down? Long story short, we're still running into this tempor temporal coupling because this is all asynchronous. What do we need to do in this case? Well, actually a very similar approach. We can have an inbox table. So the inbox table is going to receive a commit or actually this commit will also go to other tables. And then our relay service is gonna pull this like here and then post the data to the emailing service and finally uh, send an acknowledgement to the broker. And as you can see, we're still doing the deduplication. So as you can see, outbox and inbox pattern are basically the same thing, it's just the inverse of it. Now let's take a look at the code to better understand it. I'm going to already start my Docker containers. So I have two folders for two different examples and you're gonna find the code on the GitHub. I have an Outbox pattern and the Outbox pattern has a Docker Compose file. And the Docker Compose file is gonna have a MySQL server for the database where the, our Outbox table is gonna live. We also have RabbitMQ for the broker and we have order service that's gonna produce the order and we have the relay service that's going to pick up the orders from the Outbox table. Now let's take a look at the JavaScript files. So the order service is basically like this. We have one endpoint. Every time an order comes in, we're gonna begin a transaction. And when we begin the transaction, we're gonna insert something into the orders table, basically the order itself. We're gonna insert the item, the ID, the quantity. And at the same time, we're going to execute or insert the data in our outbox pattern for the relay service to pick it up later. After that, the order is created, as simple as that. Now we're gonna go to the relay service and see what this guy is doing here. So the relay service first gonna wait for the RabbitMQ to finally connect to it. And then every 10 seconds, I just increase it to 10 seconds just for this demo. Usually it will be less than a second. This guy is simply going to select from the outbox table where published zero, meaning we haven't published this message to the broker yet. And then in a, in a for loop, we're basically going to update all the published ones to one to indicate that this record has been published already. So let's take a look at our database. We have orders database, orders table, I mean. So like this, we have one record of books and Apple's also five. And we also have our outbox table. Let's open it and you can see we also have two records, orders created, payload, and published one. Both of them have been published to the RabbitMQ broker. Now, let's go to our example. And this time I'm going to create, let's say, bananas. I like them. Bananas. And I'm gonna send three bananas as an order. And let's make a request, but let me actually make the console bigger. So send a request 
and we get 201 created. Now what's going to happen within the next 10 seconds is the we're going to send the message to the RabbitMQ and it happened automatically. So if I refresh our orders table, we're already going to have our orders, three bananas. But if I refresh the outbox, it should also have the same records record and already published because within the 10 seconds, we already did send the message for order three. This is pretty much it, guys. If you like the video, smash like and subscribe and become a member if you want to support my channel in any other way. And I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.